as you can see, it's very dated, it's very dingy, and what we're gonna do is, we're gonna try to bring some light in here. But as a proper entrepreneur, these type of things should not scare you. It's just a one-way system over here, and if you're clever, you'll just carry on buying. And uh, as you can see, everything needs to be done in here. It seems like it hasn't been touched or lived in for quite a number of years. It takes teamwork to make the dream work, and these are the guys who are helping me make it happen. Where there's an opportunity to add a height to these particular buildings. Hi, I'm Michael Cosmos. Welcome to my home. Today I'll be showing you what I get up to as a property entrepreneur investing in the north of England. Come on in. Before we head out, let me take you upstairs to my home office where I get most of my work done. Because of the pandemic and the environment we're in nowadays, you need somewhere where you can do all your work without needing to head out. So I've got a little setup I have upstairs. Let's go up. So this is where I get most of my work done in the morning. Uh, but before I come in here, I tend to have a very simple routine. You know, I, I wake up about 5.30 uh, and I start off with uh, meditation. And then after that, I'll go into my workout space and then do a bit of cardio and weight training. You know, it's important to keep yourself fit and active because when you're fit and active, you can execute your goals. Uh, at the end of the day, like they say, health is wealth and you gotta take care of yourself to be able to you know do what you need to do uh, then after that I'll make some time to read or write uh, as you can see behind me I've got my book from idea to income shameless plug you can check it out on Amazon and uh, so in the mornings I take time to write and I'm, I've got a few more projects coming up once I actually get started with my day I would first of all look at my to-do list for that particular day and make sure that you know I know what objectives I have and what I need to achieve uh, and then I go into maybe paperwork because I always get reports uh, for my solicitor uh, regarding any property that we are purchasing at the time so this is just an example of a property report that I will receive not interesting but very important if you are going to be doing your property right uh, then after that I'll either be looking at some deals that are coming through and doing some number crunching because property is all about numbers 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 you have to know your numbers because you have to buy at the right price refurb at the right price rent out at the right price and you have to have all of those prices and numbers in place before you make a move on any given deal before we head out, remember you need a good power team behind you if you're going to be successful in real estate investing. Your power team can include people like your conveyancer lawyers who help you purchase property, planning consultants if you're into developments, your letting and your sales agents for purchasing property because they can be a great source for good deals as well as making sure that you get tenants for your properties and ultimately the team that helps you renovate and maintain the properties that you have. And I'll be showing you some members of my team because like they say, it takes teamwork to make the dream work and these are the guys who are helping me make it happen. One of the key things in property investment is that you need to know where to find your deals. Uh, there are so many sources where you can find your deals, including online. You can sign up to real estate websites and put your notifications on there, and you'll be able to get uh, the right deals that meet your criteria. Or alternatively, you can buy from auction. I tend to do a lot of purchasing from auctions because I like the fact that it's instant and I can walk away with the property straight away knowing that I have purchased it. But also, uh, you can look around Around you uh, look around your neighborhood the streets that you're walking in there's always a real estate opportunity staring you in your face and you need to spot it and take the appropriate action uh, and contact the owner of that particular property uh, depending on what city or what state or what country you're in uh, there should be a land registry of some sort where you can uh, send a letter to the person who owns the building just finding out if they're interested in selling it uh, and as we are walking around I can see something Thing, uh, that matches what I think could be a deal. Yeah, it's this one here. 
Okay, see this one here? As I was driving around, I just saw this property. This is an example of how you can find off-market deals. These type of properties are everywhere. Look around you, you can find them, and you can go on land registry, find out who owns the property, and write them a letter. You might be surprised they'll get back to you, and you could actually negotiate a price off-market in comparison to fighting with other sellers and buyers on the open market. Okay, so we are on our way to the first property uh, in Leeds. Uh, Leeds is an interesting city. It has good fundamentals uh, and in the future here we have HS2, the new railway line that will connect most of the country. Okay, so we're here at the property. Uh, there are three things we are working on here to make this property uh, what it needs to be. First of all, we need to address the issue of planning. This block of lots doesn't have planning permission, uh, so we need to look at how we can get it planning permission so that we can then move it on in terms of sell it or refinance it. Second of all, it has what are called improvement notices. These are notices which are issued by the council relation to the condition of the flood and what needs to be done. If you do not address the improvement notices, you can incur more fines. And then thirdly, we just need to do a proper refurb and improve the condition of the units that are within this block. So come inside and let's have a look at uh, what it looks like. Okay, so this is the hallway area. Uh, as you can see, it's very dated, it's very dingy. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna try to bring some light in here and we'll probably redo in terms of the entire painting and decor. So this is one of the better flats within the block. Uh, this one needs a bit more of a refurb approach to it. It doesn't have too much wrong with it, but to make it much more comfortable and attract the tenant profile we are looking for, we'll be doing a bit more work in here. So we'll be looking at doing all the painting to the rooms, uh, we'll change the floors and we'll probably install a new heating system uh, and a new kitchen in this space. This is one of the smaller bed seats and uh, as you can see, everything needs to be done in here. It seems like it hasn't been touched or lived in for quite a number of years. But as a property entrepreneur, these type of things should not scare you because where you need to advise value is in places like this and by literally stripping everything out we'll be able to really add value to this building and uh, create a new home for someone out there and what we're going to do in this particular unit we are going to strip everything out we will reposition the bathroom into that other space be prepared to get your hands dirty and get into houses like this refurb them up and put them back on the market okay so once you strip everything back i think this will be a good one bedroom flat for a working professional within the local area so stay tuned in subscribe to the channel i'm going to keep saying that uh, so that that way you can see what will happen once we have finished refurbing this particular property okay, so we're here at the property and i have roger with me who's part of the power team uh he's a planning consultant uh and he's going to be helping us with this unit so roger what are we facing what are some of the challenges and the solutions uh, we have we are facing with this property the issues here are about how's the best way to take this use this current use through the planning process and there are there are two options the option are, at the moment this property is used as flats hmm. uh, on, on all levels but some of the floor areas of some of the flats are below the standards that the council and the government want these days so what we need to look at is what is the best approach to how do we confirm and establish the use and get the planning approval that you need on this building. And there are two choices. One is to go for a planning permission retrospectively because the use is already here. The alternative is to go what's called a lawful development certificate. And that means we're trying to prove that what is here already is immune from any planning process because it's been in use for so long. They're the, they're the options, they're the challenges. We will look at what the best option is um, now that we've done the survey of the property and we can get a layout for it. Thank you very much, Roger. Okay. And you've been very useful. Uh, like, like I say, guys, get the right people on your team and they'll be able to make things easier for you. Okay, so now that you've seen the internals for this particular block of flats, as well as some of the issues we will have to uh, resolve, let me just run you through the numbers. So to start off with, we purchased the unit um, at 130,000 uh, post auction, and we are going to be spending about 40 to 45,000 some people might think that's a bit low but because we have our own construction team uh, so we're able to keep the prices low and once you have let out all the units you're looking at a return of about 23,000 that gives you around 13% yield uh, so in terms of the end value uh, for something like this 
uh, you might use an income or investment based model to value it we would sell something like this to an investor at 10 percent yield so that means that we can value it at around 230,000 pounds and that gives you an overview of the numbers for this particular block of lots we're off to the next property which is in Durham about an hour and a half away from Leeds uh, we invest right across the northeast and the northwest including Yorkshire which means that I do a lot of traveling uh, but if you're prepared to travel you know you can get a lot of great deals across uh, the north of England um, the reason why we invest in the north of England uh, we started off a few years ago Ago, and now we are really scaling up our operation is because one first of all you get a lot of below market value properties these are properties that are discounted anything from 25 to 30 uh, percent which then gives us an opportunity to add value as well as uh, sell them on or refinance them at a profit the second reason is that affordability uh, is very affordable to rent within the northern cities. Um, when you look at uh, rent affordability assessments out there, it's recommended that your rent should not be more than 35% of your income. And when you're looking at the cities in the south, most people spend more than 35% of their income on rent. But the average person in the northern cities spends less than 35% of their income on rent. So that's another issue because long term, it gives you greater level of security when you know that your tenants can afford rent. Uh, and then thirdly is the yield. Yield is simply the return you get from your investment uh, on an annual basis. So on average, you're looking at a typical yield of between 10 to 15 percent on properties up north okay guys this is the second property of the day we have just got the keys for this property as well the team are in there and they are beginning their works this is a perfect example of the bra strategy where you buy renovate refinance and rent out and pull out the initial funds you would have put into the deal uh, to give you the top figures uh, we bought this for 46,000 pounds and we're going to spend about seven to eight thousand pounds remodeling the property and we should have an end value of about 75 once we are done uh, this is based in Durham about a stone throw away from the new Amazon depot as well as Durham city center it's an area we've never previously invested in but because of the developments in the area we've taken a second look and I think uh, there's demand and potentially increase in value in the coming years so come in let's meet the team who are doing the renovations this is a two bed uh, two reception property here in Durham uh, we're just at the first day of refurb and you got some of the guys here already starting to do some work and I'm gonna get uh, John uh, you want to tell us what you're up to today yeah so we're just stripping up the wallpaper the old white paper and um, trying to clean the walls as well uh, rip up the floor and take uh, the old carpet off and then we're gonna clean the walls and getting ready for, for decoration and painting. And then we have the, the bathroom upstairs, which we can um, refurnish it and put a new bathroom in. We're gonna recycle the chicken, um, get new cupboards, get new sink, and uh, renew the tiles as well on, the, uh, on that. Yeah, so there you go guys uh, within a couple of weeks or so we'll be back at this property so remember to subscribe and you can see the finished product so you're talking about two bedroom nice size small family home right here in Durham just down the road from what where everything is happening at the Amazon depot as well as all the developments that are happening within the Durham uh, city center so yeah let's keep on going with the property journey so since we're in the area just thought let me pass by one of the key people who makes it happen as part of my investment processes remember your power team are the key people who enable you to invest uh, and turn around the deals that you're doing and one of those people for me is Abraham and I'm gonna let him introduce himself and tell you what he does hi my name is Abraham I lend funds to investors short term so they can uh, escalate and they can build an empire as quickly and as fast as possible um, it's very similar to a mortgage but it's short term it's no longer than 12 or 18 months and we use an extremely fast process unlike the banks which can take two months for funds to be released we could do it in two weeks and that's you know that's what I do in a nutshell 
Ah, hey. So, I mean, you, you're quite different, per se, because I have worked with a lot of bridging lenders and a lot of other companies that work in this space. Um, in terms of your autonomy to be able to make decisions or even fund maybe something that they would not fund. What do you look for? Um, what's your criteria for lending money or as well as assessing investments out there? It's very simple. There's two criteria. It's the borrower, who is the borrower, and it's also the property. Okay. The most important part by me is who the borrower is. Okay. Once I'm happy with the borrower, then I look at the security of the property. But it's not rocket science and it's logic which we look at to we see can the person afford to pay the, the, the interest, can he afford to pay the loan back, um, what experience he has and what security is offering. I, hear you. I mean, what's really important, especially when you are buying from auction, you tend to have uh, completion terms which are within 14 to 28 days at most times. So that's where someone like Abraham comes into place and is able to fund your deal uh, within that short space of time, whereby the average mortgage will take about two to three months. So therefore, you can't really get those below market value deals that require you to move very quickly. So, I mean, what's the quickest turnaround you've ever funded a property deal? We've done it in three days. Three days? Three days, yeah. And does that include valuation and everything? Include valuation and everything, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, but we had to work hard and was pressurizing. Mm. Um, but it was a deal that came, um, he had been promised uh, funds from another source and it fell through. And, uh, you know, we took the valuation, you could get it retyped. So, you know, spoke to the valuer. Um, you know, I spoke to the the, uh, the borrower. The beauty of this business is that we can talk to the borrower, the borrower can talk to myself and I can make that decision and we can work together on it. Whereas if you're going through a whole uh, huge, uh, um, you know, bank, you have to go this processes you have to go through, which, you know, holds things back. I understand. So in th what's your view at the moment in terms of the property market per se? You have a lot of activities happening due to the pandemic, uh, the outlook uh, of the market, some are buoyant, some people are a bit more uh, cautious in this kind of market. Yeah. What, what's your take at the moment and my, how you're approaching it? My take is that uh, property prices are going to carry on going up, up and further up. Um, I believe it's a, now is an excellent time to buy. Uh, people are waiting for the pandemic to you know calm down and then see what happens but I think they would have missed the boat by then and I think there's just a one-way system over here and if you're clever you'll just carry on buying Michael. Okay great stuff. You know Abraham has been a great help for me especially in terms of getting certain deals through the door that most lenders may not necessarily look at because probably they have a very rigid system. Okay just finished my last meeting of the day I'm here in Newcastle city centre I've been discussing uh, a deal with one of the owners of the properties behind me. What we are trying to achieve here is what's called land assembly land assembly is the process of assembling one development side by putting together a number of properties so we've just been discussing terms with all the landowners for the buildings behind me so that we can get them into an agreement and we can take the proposal to planning okay so to identify a site like this you have to look at where there's an opportunity to add a height to these particular buildings so if you pan out you can see opposite me there's a 10-story building and you can easily see that you can add a height to this row of building and create a bigger development site. Yeah, so that's it. That's my day. Uh, so as you have seen, we have talked about all different type of properties from the block of flats in Leeds to the small house in Durham to this big development site right behind me in the center of Newcastle. There are a number of different strategies I use when it comes to property investment. Hopefully that has given you an insight into what I do on my day-to-day -day basis and I hope you have learned something from it. I'll see you later. You take care.